Okay, so a little bit of background about me. So um, as Christina said, I'm a branding consultant. So basically I have worked my whole career in advertising and marketing and I decided about nine years ago to take a particular um, niche within branding. Um, and I have worked on national brands. So some of the brands I've worked on when I worked in ad agencies include the Times newspaper, um, Super Nanny um, and Hotel Divan. Um, so I think most of those are UK businesses, but Super Nanny you might know from the TV. Um, and uh, also I've worked on numerous small businesses and that has been my focus the last decade um, as I have been running my own business. So I am a really big believer that the principles that big businesses and companies use for branding can just as easily be adapted for individuals and small businesses. Um, branding is all about uh, creating the image that you want to be perceived as and putting it out there into the world. So I think that it gives small businesses a really big opportunity to, to ensure their success. And I think for individuals, personal branding is excellent in that way because it helps you shape up uh, your image in the way that you'd like to be perceived. So uh, without further ado, so there are some of, I don't know if you've heard of those, but those are some of the brands that I had worked on. Um, and like I said, since I generally work with small businesses and individuals. So you may have heard this saying that you only get one chance to make a first impression. Um, and it's one of those things they say, whether it's an interview room or, you know, first meeting an investor or meeting a prospective partner. It's one of those phrases that gets banded about a lot. Um, but it actually is true. And here's the sort of science behind it. So the human brain is incredibly instinctive and it takes just one tenth of a second to judge whether uh, it feels a person is trustworthy. Um, and online uh, users take, well, far less than a second, just 0 0.05 of a second to form an instant opinion about your website. So this stuff isn't even conscious. It really happens that quickly. Um, and there's another stat I didn't include here, which is actually mad, which is that um, you will meet over 80,000 people in your life and you will remember just 0.1% of them. Um, so these stats might seem sort of big and scary, but the truth is that actually, if you know how quickly these decisions are made, if you shape up the way you present yourself, you can actually um, ensure that you come out, come down on the right side of these and earn people's trust or their attention to at least hear what you have to say or, you know, um, go beyond that very, very first point. So, yeah, this is where personal branding comes in. And one point I wanted to make early on um, is that personal branding isn't necessarily a construct that some people decide to opt for. Um, it, we all have a natural personal brand and um, it just might not really be defined in any certain way. So um, personal branding as against personal brand is shaping it up so that it's the midsection between, uh, you know, the perfect sweet spot between how you see yourself and how others see you. So it really is how you want others to see you. Uh, so it is a consistent profile for individuals and um, as I said it's a way to project yourself in a way you'd like to be perceived and actually it can be particularly powerful whether you are um, self-employed freelance or within employment and um, everybody can uh, hone a personal brand and and reap the benefits of that because it can help you um, basically carve out a niche and a reputation within your industry, whether that is as your own business owner or um, as an employee. So yeah, so the, the bottom one basically, it's a way that you are remembered by people who don't know you. So obviously your friends and family and loved ones are going to know you and you know, the full 360 of you, but we only, you know, we wouldn't put up every single thing that we post on Facebook. We wouldn't want to share that exact full version of ourselves with our employers. So it's kind of working out um, a way that 
um, feels professional and comfortable, but also authentic to present yourself. All right, so um, I feel like the phrase personal branding has become much more uh, accepted and understood in general over the last few years, but I always begin this talk by just busting some myths. Um, this is the first one. Um, everyone thinks, you know, personal branding, branding is having a logo. Y yes, you may have a logo. So some personal brands, especially those people who are freelance. So if you're a freelance writer, an actress, uh, an accountant, a photographer, it's likely you will have a logo to represent your, your business. And as your business is you, then that is a personal brand. But you do not need to have a logo in order to have a a really slick and successful personal brand. Um, you have to be famous to have a personal brand. Um, it's really cheesy. So I always think of, um, I don't know if you guys have The Apprentice over there, um, but I always think of the contestants on that and they always come out with the most cheesy, awful sort of taglines for themselves. And you know, that is personal branding on one level, but that is not at all how it, how it has to be. So yeah, there's another myth and I think there's a big fear that it will make you look pretentious if you were to suddenly have a personal brand. Some of us like to live in the comfort zone of everything being a bit sort of unclear and unprofessional because it makes us feel that we're not really being too extreme putting ourselves out there. And I fully understand that. Um, I know a graphic designer who, you know, didn't invest in a professional website over 10 years of a career and just relied on getting work through friends and uh, acquaintances. But, um, you know, that basically there was a limitation to that. She always ended up doing jobs a little bit cheaper um, and it really came from a place of fear, you know. So actually the opposite would be a personal brand is putting your best foot forward. Uh, so yeah, a waste of money. So that kind of comes back to the logo. Actually, you can create a personal brand without spending a penny. You can do it all yourself just by following some principles, which I will share with you in this talk. Um, and that you have to be super controlled in everything you say and do and have a completely perfect Instagram grid. So none of this is true. You can be human. You don't have to be really arrogant and uh, pretentious. You don't have to waste a lot of money and you don't have to suddenly have business cards with your own sort of insignia on. So with that all said, do you really need a brand if you were an individual? So for the case of this, I'm going to share with you a case study. So I have made up completely hypothetical, so I'm not sort of damning anyone in this. Um, I use this case study of Tom, who's a singer songwriter, uh, to demonstrate the power of personal branding. So Tom very much is, um, it would be very similar to the kind of clients that I often do come across or people contact me for an opinion and I would see this kind of scenario. So in Tom's case, he has performed at a few bars and family, uh, sorry, family events, and he has a regular slot at his local. Um, so, you know, he has a lot of uh, support in his friends and family and think he has some talent. So after he's had a bad string of day jobs, he's decided to make a go of it. So Tom has... Tom has written a business plan. He's got some structure for a business plan online, done some research, and he realizes that events and weddings will be his main core commercial market. Um, but he's just starting out, so he knows he wants to get himself some marketing materials, but equally, he doesn't want to spend much. And this is a very relatable situation, but I just wanted to show how that can actually do more harm than good. So he's got himself a free website, free business cards on Vistaprint, a Facebook page and an Instagram, and here they are. So um, obviously I've just created all of these because it's hypothetical, but this is very common. Somebody would go on and because they're living in that place of um, concern and fear, maybe they're in a very early stage of venturing into something. And it's a combination of not wanting to spend too much money and not having really decided who you are yet, that you would end up just using templates. So you would go to the website and you would choose a template that felt a bit rock and roll or a bit musicy. And then on the business cards, similar, you would just choose a template. And instantly, even if we just take those two, you can see how there's a huge disconnect. They don't look like they come from the same person. Um, 
I'll speak about naming a little bit later, but also if you scan these, you can quickly see that on his website, he presents as Tom Grant Singer. On his business cards, he's Tom Grant Singer Songwriter. Um, on his Facebook, he's Tommy The Voice Grant. And on his Instagram, he's I am Tom Grant. Now, this situation can emerge for a number of reasons, um, you know, not least uh, handle and domain availability. But I'd say, you know, my absolute first tip to you would be if, for example, you are um, thinking of setting up your own business or you have some kind of side hustle, then get your domain. Um, and even if you're not, try and get the ha your handle, get a handle that feels right and could be used across various things. Um, and, you know, get creative. I mean, in terms of, I would always advise against, if, if you want to kind of come across with a level of professionalism, I would advise against having to add things like underscores and random numbers to things. So, um, for example, it could be in this case, if Tom Grant was taken on Instagram and that was the handle that this person wanted, they could have gone with Tom Grant Singer. And that might have given them that extra few characters, that point of differentiation that they could have got that. Um, so actually, gosh, I've forgotten to include it in my ref in my uh, resources for you guys. Um, I will I will message Christina later with the link actually. But there's a website you can go to, and I think it's called Namevine. It's called Namevine.com. And if you go to it and type in um, a handle or a name, it will tell you quickly whether it's available um, on a domain um, uh, with a .com or .co.uk extension, or whether it will be or a .co. Um, and if it's available on various social media. Um, so yeah, that was one thing is basically um, the lack of consistency here, uh, you know, well, basically here, because there's no consistency, the image just does not look professional and therefore Tom looks like he's a hobbyist. Um, so you can play at that level. If you're dipping your toe in the water, I understand that you might just want to play on that level rather than put yourselves out there fully, but just understand that this is how you're going to be perceived. So I reimagined Tom's uh, brand um, quite quickly. So I'm not saying it's necessarily a perfect brand identity, but I took into consideration that his core market was weddings and events um, and made it all consistent for him across his business cards, website and social media. So. Uh, an effective personal brand, well, an effective brand in general does three things. It will reflect who you are. It will appeal to your audience. And that's really, really important. And it's consistent. So in general and branding, points two and three are generally more important than point one, because it's more important for, say, um, Coca-Cola or Adidas. It's more important for their brand to really uh, appeal to their audience than it is for it to express their absolute hopes and desires of their executive team. Um, but when it comes to personal branding, there's an extra element involved because it's you, you're branding yourself. So you have to feel absolutely comfortable that it, it feels like a version of you, um, a professional, authentic version of you. Um, one final note on domains, actually. Uh, I know some people who say that you should register your domain for your name um, like your first name, surname.com, if it's available, uh, whether you have a business or not, just to ensure that you have that little bit of web space yourself. So it's not a bad tip, actually. You never know what's around the corner. Um, and you can always do something like redirect it to your LinkedIn as well. So there's always that to think about, but I wouldn't say you have to. All right, so personal branding is, uh, we've kind of covered some of this already, but it's great for professionals who are looking to build a reputation in their industry. Um, it's it's really strong and powerful for people who are maybe looking to break into a new industry or make a sideways move because it's so powerful for that because rather than just looking at your CV on something like LinkedIn, you're having the opportunity to, sh to shape it and say what you are interested in, what you'd like to be perceived as. So it's super useful for entrepreneurs. So many businesses, um, I'm thinking of like Glossier, where Emily Ways is the uh, CEO, um, Whitney Wolf for Bumble. I'm thinking, you know, especially within our social media age, um, as well as being a founder of a business, it's actually really useful to have a certain amount of personal brands um, out there so that you know, so that your star keeps rising. If you sell your business that you still, you know, it becomes a rung on your ladder of your career, um, you know, rather than you being completely one and the same as your business. 
and then it's also fantastic for freelancers, writers, journalists, bloggers, those wanting to blog or be influencers. And also it's really powerful. And I know this might be, uh, you know, a little sensitive at the moment because we're going through such difficult times, but actually um, I've used many of these principles to help my family if they've been in a situation where they're needing to get a job um, just on a low level, not necessarily getting them a full website and logo, but with, you know, the CV tips, LinkedIn tips and photography tips that I will share with you. Okay, so we're going to jump into um, how I recommend you can create a personal brand. So I've got four steps for you. And the first step of those is to define your personal brand. So first of all, um, you would define your audience. So think about the situation that you want to appeal to, whether it's if you're trying, if you're job hunting, it would be employers. If you are not job hunting, but you are wanting to um, be uh, heard within your industry when you publish articles on Medium or LinkedIn, then you're thinking about peers and peers peers to senior level. Um, and if I go back to Tom, who I'm going to use throughout this, then it would be thinking about, say, couples who are engaged, planning their wedding, wedding planners, um, and those working in events. So when I think about Tom, there we are, we think about his audience is sort of couples and events. Oh, sorry for that horrible uh, error noise. Okay, so the next thing, as I touched on before, it's about thinking about your name or handle. Um, so a really, really simple one. I actually had this with a client just a couple of weeks ago. He's a coach and, um, you know, without mentioning his full business name, he had various variants of it across his website and social media. Um, and I think it had come down to um, a mix of um, availability of different handles and also just setting things up at different times. So, you know, having a Facebook page maybe before anything else and building up a little bit of a niche there and then investing in his domain and a website. Then, you know, also joining his Twitter, but not really being able to get the correct handle then um, and joining Instagram and having a slightly different variant of it. Um, so it's confusing for people and it doesn't look as professional. So um, in my case, it would be, you know, am I C Benden, am I Cara Benden or am I Cara Benden branding? You know, if so I'm quite lucky and that my name is quite unique, but if you do have a name where if you Google it, you get hundreds of results that aren't you, what I would recommend is you can either, you can either add a middle name um, or you can add something that refers to what you do. So it could be, you know, um, artist or journalism or whatever it might be. Um, and then rolling that out and using that across everything. So yeah, as I pointed out before, we had this various sort of disparate um, collection of names for Tom uh, earlier. All right, so email. I've got two tips for you on email. One is pretty basic, and um, I'm not sure the level that you guys are at with your personal branding. Um, I think it's a bit of a mix of people who, from looking at the list, it was some people who ran their own business or self-employed, and then other people who are working for um, a, you know, a bigger company, a creative company. So you may already have this down, but Basically, if you already, if, if you are still using an email address you've had for donkey's years and it's got some sort of nickname or a joke or it's got extra numbers or underscores in it because you, you know, you couldn't get the hotmail you wanted back then, then it's really time to say goodbye to that. Um, classic first name dot last name or, you know, last name dot first name, no dot in the middle, whatever works for you is nice, clean and professional. Um, so yeah, as long as you go with one of the big providers, you know, it doesn't matter if it's Outlook or Yahoo or AOL or Gmail, as long as it's really, really clean and simple and not too long, you know, I wouldn't, I think, um, yeah, try not to squeeze in everything about your USB of your business into your email address, keep it short and sweet. Um, then that's great. And the second one is I really recommend that you create a simple email signature. So this could be your first step into elevating your personal brand. If you are an employee and you haven't really 
taken that you know you have your company email and company signature and you haven't really thought about creating anything outside of that for your private email then you could just go in really gently and just create an email signature that has your name um you know what you do if you're a marketing professional whatever it could say something like that um you can put the company you work for if you want or you could just keep it open um and a website url if you have one um and i'll come back to that later but it doesn't necessarily have to be your own domain website. It could be if you write on Medium or on LinkedIn or anything like that, then a link to something like that does just as well. Just somewhere that you feel is a space that people can find out a little more about you. Um, so yeah, social media. Just make the decision up front whether your social media profiles are gonna be public or, profile, um, public or private. And, um, and if they are public, then just scan them from the perspective of um, a stranger or ideally, you know, the person you'd like to impress, whether that's an employer or a peer or whatever it may be. Um, so, yeah, I think social media feels like a difficult one because I'm not saying you can't share personal things on your social media and still be professional because of course you can. But I just wanted to illustrate this with Tom's um, Instagram. So um, all of the sections that are highlighted here are things that I don't deem to be relevant to his audience or professional. So um, this is a, just a quick scan on here. There's nothing wrong with the fact that he likes craft beer. Uh, he's got a girlfriend and you know he likes gigging. But we need to just shape up and refine how he's presenting to get those bookings. So those can be occasional things as long as the other content feels a lot more um, consistent and considered. So first of all, he's, he's misusing the opportunity of his bio up here. Uh, I have a little bio challenge for you guys later. But what I would generally say is keep it really short and clear. Um, so he's misusing this opportunity because yes, he's got music in. I mean, it shows personality, but um, this feels like a very personal profile rather than something that could potentially work for um, the couples or event organizers that might see it. So instead, he should have put down, you know, singer songwriter available for weddings and events. Um, and then, you know, he could have put singer songwriter with a, a love of craft beer and that would have been absolutely fine. And but he should have a URL to some kind of website in there um, since he is trying to promote his business. And um, in the highlights, they're really badly used. We've got one that's simply called highlights. It hasn't been renamed. So I see this all the time. People have five or six highlights just called highlights. Um, you know, use your highlights. It's literally a place where you can put at the top of the page the things that are most relevant that you most want people to see. And this isn't just for big companies or for bloggers and influencers. You can do this too. If, if, if your social media is public, then it's well worth doing. So in those highlights, he could have called them live gigs, weddings, new songs. Um, but the fact that he's got highlights, bends, stag and tunes just seems a bit informal. Um, and yeah, so basically there's no content there that particularly promotes weddings. If there was, I'd say some of the other content would be okay to mix in, but the ratio is off. He's got six um, images that are to do with his personal pursuits um, and six that are to do with music. And all, all of the six that are to do with music look pretty informal as well. So you can see that overall you'd come here and it wouldn't really inspire trust to hire him. And that's what it really comes down to. Um, if I'm being really brutal about it. So, um, you know, back to that first impression, it really counts. So yeah, here I would say a photo. Now I know at the moment, um, it may be a little bit harder than normal to get um, a photo shoot, but I know a lot of photographers who are doing, you know, um, socially distanced photo shoots and taking that very seriously and being very careful. But I really think that no matter how good your smartphone camera is, there's no equivalent for a professional headshot. It just makes the world of difference. And when you upload that to LinkedIn, it just shows that you are more serious about your career. It, um, and if you're self-employed, it's exactly the same on your about page. It's just going to, it's that subliminal level as well that you see it and it looks clean, fresh, bright, and smart. 
So yeah, so I think you can do it yourself if needs be, you know, the classic white wool suit jacket on is good enough for LinkedIn. But I really think that actually, you know, personal branding as well. Um, I haven't gone too much into photography um, because uh, this talk would be far too long, but there's, there's a whole way of it doesn't you it doesn't have to be a really traditional headshot you can have personal photo, um personal branding uh photo shoots as well where you can sit with a laptop in a coffee shop if that feels more you or or just have a more natural pose more candid um then that's great i actually quite like this one here that it's showing a bit of color a bit of personality and that behind her you know it's clearly an office we don't know where it is but it's a professional environment so i think it's a great photo all right, I'm going to speed up a little because I feel I'm uh, perhaps uh, going a bit slow and I've got a lot to share with you guys. So the second point is really obvious, really. It's just be consistent. Um, and I have a little mantra that I use with my clients to help them. So once you have defined your brand, um, you've decided on a name, maybe like some sort of tagline or phrase that you want to be associated with you um, or a job title. Um, so then I say, well, say it to people when you meet, if you, next time you meet a stranger and they ask what you do, say it as you've defined it. It will, it will feel really strange to you at first and you'll want to interject with loads of sort of nums and, you know, well, I'm trying to be and things like that and just get used to saying it without those little undermining statements and it's really powerful. Then I say write it. So write it in your email signature, write it on your LinkedIn, make it true um, and then do it. Whatever it is that you've said you're going to do, if you're a singer-songwriter, if you are a legal consultant, if you're a marketer, then, you know, go and do that. And it's, it's the sort of process that, you know, personal branding and branding in general is never just about the logo. The more you do something and say it and show up and speak about it, the more that will resonate and become really authentic about your brand rather than you just saying something and having a snazzy logo. Okay, so... Um, on your CV, some of these might be obvious as well. Um, like I said, I've spoken to people at different levels um, for this talk, so I thought I'd include all these pointers. But basically, I really, really am a strong believer that a CV does not need to be jazzy. Um, you know, I've seen some with music on and uh, gradient backgrounds and photos, and I really don't believe it needs to have any of those things. You can keep it really classy, sorry, class, classy and classic and simple. Um, if, however, you are looking for um, speaking opportunities or writing opportunities or press, then you can create more of a speaker sheet. Um, so um, again, I might email uh, Christina with some details on that, um, or you can just Google and that's where it will be a little bit more designed, but I think keep it really, really classic is fine. So website, I think that every single person who is uh, focused on their career in any way should should have a page on the internet that is about them. So that doesn't mean you have to have your own personal website. I think so uh, about.me is a really great one. It's, bit, it's quite old now actually, but it's a great place for just being able to create a personal profile, upload an image and say a little bit about what you do. You can showcase your interests and skills there as well. Also, you can do it on LinkedIn. So LinkedIn's my next one. Um, you know, there's a few different websites out there now, um, like the Dots, which is fantastic for creatives. Um, but I'd say that LinkedIn still, you know, has the mammoth share of, um, of search results and has most people on it. So I'd say if you're not on LinkedIn, you know, do something about it. I think it's really good to have a LinkedIn profile um, and just, Yes, make sure that you click to view it as a visitor so that you can see how you are coming up. Uh, okay, so this is a bit of a funny, but this is all of these profiles are genuine profiles I have found on LinkedIn. So obviously I've blurred out their details to um, spare their blushes. Um, but these are all pictures that I've seen that I just don't think are the right level for LinkedIn. So yeah, here we've got like a selfie, a glamorous selfie, but the worst thing is she's clearly cropped out a friend. So that's just terrible. I think that's, you know, that's for Instagram. It's not for LinkedIn. Um, a holiday photo, a night out photo, another holiday or night out photo. 
uh, posing at a wedding, out and about. You know, I think basically you can see what's going wrong. They look like lovely, warm people, but it doesn't look professional. There's a time and a place for these things. And I think, you know, keeping them, um, keeping them to um, your, your private social media or more informal social media is the way to go. And also actually this header section, um, you can simply use a tool like Canva um, to create uh, a graphic. And actually I know later this week, you have a talk, a fantastic talk about how to design um, simple pieces of content with a graphic designer. Um, I'm not saying you have to, because I really don't think that everybody has to, but you can use that as a space to um, put your website URL or show a photo of something like a conference or a talk that you were at, or if you do anything creative, like if you're a jeweler or a cake maker or a fashion designer, upload a picture of your work or behind the scenes, and that will really help just elevate and bring a sense of personality um, to your brand. Okay, so my third one is to be memorable. So that is the goal. We basically want to lodge yourself in somebody's memory. They'll come across you online or they'll come across you in person, and you just want to make a positive impression that lasts. So here are some ways that you could do it. So, so for a business, you might call this a USP, but I like for personal branding, I call it a latch. So just something that, you know, they can sort of latch onto about you. And the good thing is you don't have to just leave it to chance. You can actually do little things. Um, and it's all about, for me, I think little touches are the things we remember most, whether it's from a big brand or from an individual. Um, so I've got four different examples down here. So the first one is a business card. So that's a really quirky business card. You're bound to talk about that if you get handed it. And it's also, it's just such a quirky shape that you would remember it. You would probably keep it. Um, so that's a really, that's an interesting one, you know, back when we're able to do in-person networking again. Um, but it doesn't necessarily have to be a business card, but it could just be, I mean, the very first talk I ever did was about branding and I wanted to make the point about subliminal um, connection with colors. So I actually made a, a tier of uh, mint green um, chocolate chip uh cupcakes and obviously everyone loved those and at the end of the talk i said you know i don't know if you noticed but that was in one of my brand colors you know so at the time the brand was all mint so it made sense so that brings me nicely onto my next point which is um my brand color well i have uh blue and mint as my brand colors but blue is my primary color and i get told this time and again that um people say oh i love what you do on instagram or oh that's your blue isn't it or, or they'll even photograph something like see a blue teapot or uh, a blue cocktail out or something like that and send me a photo and it's kind of amazing because that's exactly what i was intending to do i mean i love the color blue and i'm all about being simple and consistent but actually um, it's no, it's no real surprise, you know, like blue isn't necessarily my favorite color. It's the color of my branding. It's a color that works. Um, I do love it, but I love many colors. And if I hadn't deliberately chosen to curate through that color and show up in that color more often, because I wanted it to connect with my personal brand, then I would be in every color under the sun because I love color. Um, and it was a conscious decision that I made. It's always been in my brand, but I made a conscious decision about 18 months ago on my Instagram. And I noticed that I had a huge amount of people sort of respond very positively to that. Um, and that's just the people that message me. So essentially, I know that it works. It's one of the simplest tricks we use with small business branding is to pick one color and go for it because, um, up to 87% of the, uh, of, of your, um, sorry, up to 87% of um, somebody's uh, first impression about a brand is made up from the color because our brain reads color and then it will roughly read form and, and shape and then it will read text. So the color is very instinctive. It's why you may notice that own brands in supermarkets uh, rip off quite closely the shape of packaging and color of packaging and labels of well-known brands. Um, and if you're in a rush, you may end up coming home with the wrong version of a product because they so closely mimic it in order to try and, you know, uh, muzzle in on that market share for the much bigger or more recognized brand. So yeah, my third tip is you can do something as simple as 
just leaving, like giving a handwritten thank you note or sending a Christmas card, little things like that. Um, it will really depend on your work, the type of work you have or the business you have. But there are so many little ways to be remembered. Um, and it can just be as simple as, you know, introducing yourself on email um, and, you know, asking if there's anything that you can do or, or, or leaving somebody a voice note after they've met with you in person rather than just texting or something like that. Anything that literal that humanizes it is a really good way to be remembered if you haven't met a person especially. And then finally, I actually included, and she, she may be on the call, so hello if so, but I in included a designer, Ellie, that I came across very recently on Instagram. And um, she felt like the natural choice because um, I love when people include something quirky in their bios, in their social media bios that makes them memorable. And like I said, I very newly just started following Ellie. And Obviously, she's a designer, so we work in very related fields. So I was interested in what she did anyway. And I saw her logo and I thought it was really sweet. So that kind of stuck in my mind. But it wasn't until I went to her profile, because I follow a lot of designers, honestly. Um, and it wasn't until I went on her profile and I saw that she um, does nail art and she has a whole account for it and she's really good at it, that it stuck in my mind because I thought, oh, that's quirky. You know, like she does it and she's at that really high level in it. So I remembered her and especially, you know, the, the sort of uh, down to earth tone of, of, pre of presenting it as, you know, I think I'm a nail artist. You know, it's quite, um, uh, you know, it, it's, um, it's quite humble and, and um, it's got a warm tone of voice about it. So instantly she was remembered. So. I think that's a really nice way is just including some personal quirk um, that can help you be remembered. Other things as well could be like if you've got a signature kind of thing, like you always have a red lip for it, you know, then that's great too. Um, yeah, whatever it might be. I had a somebody I worked with, um, uh, one of managers in advertising was never in a flat shoe. And I remember that that was literally in her Twitter bio. I, you know, I feel lost in a flat shoe and it really stayed in my mind, but it was true. She never was. So some ideas for you there. All right. So earlier I said, I had a little challenge for you guys. So, um, try in 10 words or less. So obviously you can do this after this, but have a little think and let it let it were in your brain this afternoon. And um, yeah, do, do tag me on social media if any of you change your bios, by the way. I'm at Cara Benden. Um, I'm mainly just on Instagram these days. I am on Twitter too. Um, but yeah, basically, um, I'd love if some of you did change your bios as a result. Um, 10 words is brilliant. If it's a bit more, then fine. Um, but try and write a bio that will grab attention, explain what you do and have a little quirk. So I've written some little examples for you here. So instead of just saying that somebody is um, a journalist for Guardian Film um, or you know media journalist for Guardian Film, I've put chocolate lover and film noir enthusiast right for Guardian Film. Mm -hmm. That one's quite nice as well because it places the person before their job. Um, and then this one is the opposite way, right? um, information architect, compulsive reader, pensive writer, husband and dad. It gives you a, a, a a real sense of what that person is as well as what they do. So it brings them to life. American in London, VR and AI geek, occasional singer. Again, you get a snapshot instantly, or at least I do, of who that person is. Um, and finally, fan of one-liners and eyeliners, senior features writer at Who, What, Hair. So again, it's, 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 it's funny, it's memorable, and it gives you a sense of what they do and who they are. Yeah, let, let me know how you get on with that. If, you, if anybody does that, I'd love to know. All right, so my final tip is once you have defined your brand, thought about your audience, your name, how you're gonna present yourself, got your handles, maybe got a website, um, you have uh, written your, um, your CV, you've got your professional headshots, um, you have, uh, I'm trying to think of all the other tips I said, but basically once you've done all the above, the most important thing is to have confidence. So um, if you try to be completely perfect and curate to a super high level, trying to second guess what people want, then it will no longer be authentic and actually you'll hide that, that personal brand you already had. Because let's remember, personal brand is something you have anyway. 
personal branding is shaping that up in a way where you take control of the narrative. So life isn't as flat as Instagram. So show your true colors and be passionate about what you do because I think passion really is, it's gonna come through in anything. Uh, so yeah, obviously the very famous quote, be yourself, everyone else has already taken uh, by Oscar Wilde. But um, also this is from um, a, an entrepreneur who I saw um, speak last year. And um, I liked that she said this, she said, do what lights up and it will lead to your personal brands. So actually a sort of different way around of thinking about it. So if you're a bit undecided, then do what you you know, pursue with passion what it is you're interested in and, and a personal brand, a pattern will emerge. Another really good tip actually is ask a friend, ask a friend how they might describe you because it can be very hard for ourselves to get outside of, our, well, to get outside of ourselves and know how to present ourselves. So um, a lot of what I do is providing, you know, sort of knowledgeable objectivity for clients. Um, but, you know, you, can, you could just ask a friend as well. All right, so some of the resources I mentioned earlier. All right, so um, Exclaimer is an email signature tool. So if you, if you have your own uh, website, your own business, then you probably worked with, well, you may have worked with a web developer and then they can actually custom code you or design and custom code your signature. But for the point of this, you know, let's assume that it's just a personal brand. You haven't invested in a logo design or a developer or anything and you can create your own. So here's a little picture of me down here and actually my point about blue is, is, is uh, coming to the forefront here because here I am in red because I like all colors and it was before I sort of uh, decided to curate my image uh, as more blue. But um, I had just uploaded a headshot, um, put in my name and details there um, and it, I think that's, you know, that's a pretty good first step. Um, if you're uncomfortable putting your photo in, then you know, you need, you can just format putting in your, your name, your job title and some social media links or a website link. But I do think that actually, while I wouldn't have an image on a CV, having it in an email signature actually shows a level of professional awareness um, and ambition that's quite impressive. So then um, in terms of having a page on, um, on the web, on the internet, so that's what I would say, you have a page on the internet that is dedicated to you. So you can go to about.me for a free page and you can also go on LinkedIn. Um, then there's also the dots, which is fantastic. It's sort of like LinkedIn for creatives. Um, you can also join Medium. So Medium's fantastic if you, um, if you want to be seen as a bit of a thought leader, if you write, um, you don't necessarily have to be a writer if you are somebody who can write about your subject area. It's so widespread and I always find something fascinating on there. Um, what I would say is you don't have to choose one of these. You can be across all of them because it will only strengthen your personal image. The more times you come up on Google, you know, the, the better really. So if you, you know, another thing you could do actually is Google yourself and see how many of those are, are, are you. Um, if you've got um, a name that's a bit more common, you might just have to work a bit harder on that, but it's completely doable. Um, leave your imprint on the internet in a way that you want it to be seen and it will really rise your pro raise your profile. Um, and uh, if you, you know, if name um, isn't an issue, like you have a more unique name, still go and do this exercise because you'll be surprised how much of the past it, it sort of drags up. And the aim of the game is not to see your Facebook first, you know, because Facebook is, you know, everyone has Facebook. It's to maybe see, do you have a LinkedIn? Do you have a website? You know, do you have a Medium page? Are you on Twitter? Were you featured in any press? Those things all are really, really good and build a lot of credibility. <laughs>